When you have no fans, the one advantage you have is you can solely focus on trying to gain fans. But once you have fans, you have to be engaging in a two-tiered effort. One is to get them to pay attention to you, and the other is the balancing act of building relationships with fans without annoying them. To make matters more complicated, you have fans who are interested in you but don't want to hear from you all the time. But I have good news for you. Not only is it a good problem to have, it's one where you can profit and start to really leverage your fan base and grow from it. So in this video, I'm going to explain how to use private access to build with your most passionate fans and keep the less interested fans happy. Hi. I'm Jesse Cannon, a music marketing nerd who's teaching musicians how to grow their fan base from 0 to 10,000 fans, and this is Museformation. So as I was saying, we're trying to talk to three segments of people when we're on social media. Potential fans. These are obviously the people who we're most excited about, since the idea that we could soon have them as fans is one of the most exciting things that keeps us going and we want to do eventful things that make them notice us. But then there's semi-interested fans. These are the people who like you but haven't become obsessed. I often think of these like artists I have a song or two of on playlists, but when I've scrolled their page I don't like more than a song or two, but I'm hoping they'll soon put out some bangers or a great record and they'll become one of my favorite artists. And then there's the stands. These are the fans who want more of you and they can't get enough of you. So potential fans, now that's the fun stuff we're all interested in. And one of the things I talked about in my last video on how to keep fans eyes glued to you is one of the ways you attract them is by doing eventful things. And if you didn't watch my last video and have no clue what I'm talking about, I highly encourage you to go back and watch it as it's linked in the description below and yet again a good reason you should be subscribed and get notified when I drop videos so you don't miss things like this. But think of it this way, when we do something eventful, we're giving reasons for our fans to tell others what we're doing and keep thinking about us, and that's how they bond with friends and other nerds about the music they love in discord chats or reddits or wherever they hang out. So if you're doing something cool that enables music discovery and for people to hear about your music since psychologically we're all trying to find things we should know about so we can bond with others and make better deeper friendships, eventful things are what gets people talking about them and those bonds building. But it's often not understood that feeding stands can help us get potential fans. Now stands are nice because it's hard to do wrong by them. They're extremely grateful for whatever you give them as they're so used to so many musicians inadequately feeding their addiction to their favorite artists. There's been a half a dozen studies where more than three fourths of fans say their favorite artists don't give them enough content. Which is kind of crazy since when I see how often some of these artists are posting I wonder if they have selfie sticks mounted to them all day. And I even think about something I tell podcasters all the time is when you survey podcast listeners about their favorite podcasts they want more time on each episode and this even goes for podcasters who tape 3 plus hour episodes like Joe Rogan. But there's always a rub right? Those fans you've brought over but aren't totally sold on you get annoyed when you're doing too much. They unfollow you when you never shut up, are posting unnecessary selfies, going live on Instagram constantly and sharing your fan stories about how great you are every 5 minutes. Like seriously, there's sometimes I see 30 stories of just how much of a banger someone's new track is for 7 days a week and I wonder why in the hell I follow them. But here's the trick, if you think of eventful things to do and pepper them with your oversharing, there's a way to feed your stands but not have it be all over your social media all the time annoying the semi interested fans who you want to grow a relationship with you so they become stands. And that's by using private access tools. Which is a perfect time to start telling you about Koji, who offers what I consider to be not only the best experience for a fan to have when they want to learn more about you, but also to build a relationship with fans and do what we were just discussing. Koji is a link in bio app store for creators. It offers a free to use free to customize link in bio platform and is truly the best link in bio for musicians. I mean just look at these profiles, they look amazing and it can all be done for free. But here's the thing, you've probably seen ones like Linktree, but Koji has this app store where you can do amazing experiences for fans to get to know you, interact with them, build relationships and even make money. I want to say these are not iOS apps, nothing to download. These are Lincoln bio apps that live on the Lincoln bio on all of your socials 24 7. 
So let me show you a few that'll help you with doing private access to fans where you can profit and have them get to know you better. In the last video I told you about Rares, their app which is your own personal non-sexual OnlyFans, right on your link in bio. The fans who pay can get access to the content you make behind the paywall so you can profit off your most passionate fans who want to hear from you all the time while not over posting on your socials. But there's even more cool ways to do private access content. There's locked audio where you can sell beats, music, sound effects, samples from your songs, secret messages, private podcast episodes, and more. Just upload one or multiple audio files and set a price for the collection. I think this is particularly great for capitalizing the fans who can't get enough of you by selling alternate versions, demos, or songs that didn't make the cut that you don't want to upload to Spotify. Then there's Looped, the ultimate virtual venue for interactive experiences. And now you can bring those experiences directly to your link in bio with Looped Live. You can use this for live streaming experiences without having to figure out how to use complex software. You can sell this to watch you doing collaborations, live sessions, or whatever you can think of. Another really cool one is Fanfix. Followers can preview all of your available posts and subscribe to receive exclusive fan perks like sneak previews, behind the scenes, content, and exclusive merch codes on the spot. Imagine this as a backstage pass to see pre-recorded content in the studio or vlogs about processes. Hopefully by now you see you really should use these tools to engage your fans. So go learn more and get your free Koji link in bio page for all your social media. Head to the description or withkoji.com. That's W-I-T-H-K-O-J-I dot com. Now I know some of you may feel like it's a stretch that you have enough fan enthusiasm to get fans to pay for this type of thing. But the key is if you do eventful things and give fans more of what they want, you can figure out how to do this. Also remember, you can always do a poll on Instagram and YouTube and ask fans what they want more of from you and give them some choices like live streams, DJ sets, podcasts, or whatever will be eventful from them. Then start serving that to your most excited fans behind a paywall. And keep in mind, you don't need to only charge money, you can instead get an email from them. And as anyone experienced in music marketing will tell you, as you keep growing, having fans email address is like having a down payment on future income from them. So even if you just acquire their email, you could potentially stay in touch with that fan for years or decades to come and work up to them being a paying customer. I would often recommend dipping your toe in this by doing some of it just for an email at first and then moving up to paid promotions. But since I know how some of you are and I know you're already doubting that this works, so I want to go in and explain it a little bit more. I want you to watch what the fans of musicians you follow post. My bet is it's often them bragging about exclusive things they get to which is often private access they pay for whether that's concerts which really are just private access content in real life onto live streams or exclusive merch they get. Doing private access feeds fans and makes them want to spread the word about you. It's truly a win-win for growing your fan base and feeding your most active fans. Fans love to show off their fandom and the perks they get from it, which shows all their followers and gives you a free advertisement as well as things that make them feel special. Once you have fan enthusiasm, engaging those fans by doing eventful things fans would potentially share is how to get all their friends who follow them familiar with you and grow your fan base. And if you don't get that, just remember, I answer every question in the comments below. But think of it this way, doing paywall events for your stands is what gets them to share on social media to show off, which then gets their friends to see your name, notice you, and more likely to investigate you. I know some of this sounds counterintuitive, but truly this is one of the weirdest tricks that has worked the entire social media age to build a fan base and make money off fans. Okay, on the screen now is a video on how to grow your fan base from 0 to 10,000 fans or how to get your music noticed or how to blow up on Spotify in 2022. Click and keep learning. Thanks for watching.